All right, go ahead, Mr. Jackson. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, good morning. Uh, could you please state your name and spell your last name for the record? Yes. Marie Russell, R-U-S-S-E-L-L. And uh, I'm going to echo what the court just indicated. The, the air conditioners are on, on, so please keep your voice as elevated as possible and speak. Maneuver the microphone however you need to, okay? Okay. Uh, Dr. Russell, what do you do for a living? Uh, I am a uh, retired emergency physician and forensic pathologist. And tell me uh, what education you have, going all the way back to the beginning, that qualifies you as an emergency physician and former pathologist before you retire. Okay, well, uh, I've had about uh, at least 16 years of formal education beyond high school. Uh, initially, I uh, started at MIT, uh, where I uh, did my pre-med courses. I had always wanted to be a physician, and so uh, so I went to MIT for a year, took my pre took pre-med courses, and so I took some courses in law enforcement, and I became a full-time police officer here in Massachusetts. What years were you at MIT? Uh, that was uh, 1972 to 1974. Did you go to the police academy? I did. When uh, Once I be uh, became a police officer here in Massachusetts, I attended the uh, Boston Police Academy where I graduated. What year was that? That was in 1977. During the course of your training as a police officer, did you have any specialized training in hit and run and accidents and investigations? Yes, I did. Uh, I took as many courses as I could from the uh, Massachusetts Criminal Justice Training Council, uh, which included a, a course, a several day course in hit and run accident investigation. Uh, I took courses in uh, forensic uh, photography and uh, numerous other things. And then, and, and I also at the same time uh, continued to, to go to college. And I did that part time uh, where I eventually got a degree in, a bachelor's degree of science in psychology with highest honors. What institution was that from? That was from Northeastern University. And that was a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology? I think it was a Bachelor of Science. Got it. Uh, yes, a Doctor of Medicine degree in 1987. So you were there from 1983 to 1987, is that right? That is correct. And did you do a residency? I did. I did two residencies, actually. Uh, most people do one, but I, I did two. Uh, I did, uh, my first residency was a, a combined internship and residency for four years. And I did that in Los Angeles at Los Angeles County uh, Medical Center, which is a, a very big trauma center and um, what I would consider the Bellevue of the West Coast. So did any of those unusual cases, and we'll get more into this in just a second, but did any of those unusual cases include animal attacks? Yes. Uh, did you become a, a professor, an educator at any point? Yes, correct. Were you also an assistant uh, or an adjunct professor at uh, Cal State Los Angeles? Yes. Okay. For how long were you an, an adjunct professor there? I believe that was four or five years. And I taught criminalistics, um, forensic medicine there. Did LAUSC incorporate a, uh, a quality improvement program yes. within their, their uh, institution? Yes. Did you become a director of that as well? Yes. So you were director of Center for Life Support Training and director of LAUSC Medical Center Quality Improvement, is that right? The quality improvement was for the emergency department, right. yes. Uh, and did you also become the director for jail medical services? <laughs> yes. What is the... Correct. Did you also author or co-author an article entitled Law Enforcement Canine Dog Bites, Injuries, Complications, and Trends? Yes, I did. Was that in 1997? Sounds right. Was that also peer-reviewed? Yes. And that, also, that publication was also available for other physicians throughout California and throughout the country to refer to for the study of animal bites and dog bites, correct? Dog bites, yes. Dog bites. Uh, concerning animal injuries, during the course of your professional experience, how many patients have you seen, diagnosed, and or treated with animal injuries, including dog bites and scratches, if you had to estimate? Many hundreds. Uh, would you say it's over or under a thousand? I would say it's, it's over 500. Um, I can't, I, I don't know, because we didn't keep really good records back in the earlier days. But it's safe to say you've seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dog bites and scratches. Yes, in my uh, 29 years at LA County Hospital, yes. And my dog bites, I mean, dog bites I took care of and dog bites that the residents took care of, yes. Good afternoon, sir. Hi. Could you uh, please state your name and spell your last name from Jerry? My name is uh, Justin Rice, R I C E. Is that what you asked me to spell? And, uh, sir, that microphone in front of you, however you want to position that, it's flexible, so it's not uh, too far away. Is that better? That's perfect. Thank you. Um, and what do you do for work, sir? I'm an emergency uh, medicine uh, physician. And uh, how long have you been doing that? Uh, I finished my residency in 2008, so I've been uh, attending since 2008. 
And where is it that you work now? My, my current employer is uh, South Shore uh, Health. And how long have you been working for South Shore Health? Uh, I started there uh, in October of this past year, 2023. And where did you work prior to that? Before that, I had been at, uh, full time uh, at Good Samaritan Hospital in Brockton. And how long was it that you worked at Good Samaritan? Let's see. I started at Good Samaritan in 2010. Identification. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Lally, I'll let you hold on to what's been marked SS for identification. Dr. Rice, with regard to Mr. O'Keefe, um, about what time did he come into your facility at Good Samaritan? Would you like me to look at the chart here? Let's see. If you can't remember things and you need to reference the chart, you can do that, Doctor. Okay, thanks. So it looks like, based on the code sheet, first line starting at uh, 0647, so uh, I'll say 647 AM. And as far as his presentation, Mr. O'Keefe's presentation, when he came into the emergency department, um, how would you describe his presentation upon his arrival there? So uh, he would have been, uh, well, he was unresponsive and uh, intubated, as in uh, with a breathing tube uh, into his airway via his mouth. And as he came into the emergency department, what, if anything, was, was fixed in, in regard to, uh, to CPR or other resuscitative efforts? So, uh, he would have had or had uh, CPR in progress uh, and also uh, someone would have been ventilating him, his lungs, uh, via the endotracheal tube. Now there's mention within that record as far as a cardiac arrest, is that correct? Uh, I don't know, I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're asking me. Sure. Well, let me just ask you, are familiar with the term cardiac arrest? Yes. Can you describe to the jury, based on your training and experience, what, what your understanding of that term is? Sure. So, um, as in he arrived with uh, an, an in-cardiac arrest, which uh, by definition means that his heart was not autonomously or independently uh, pumping blood or, uh, in his case, uh, without electrical activity as well. Of the well, they are consistent with, uh, with a large dog attack. Um, there, the, there's a combination of both what I consider bite wounds and scratch wounds on the arm. You have been struck by a vehicle. Just give me a moment to read through the... Sure. So no, there, uh, there is not. In fact, there's no mention of a vehicle whatsoever, correct? That's correct. You testified that you observed certain abrasions and scratches on his right arm, correct? Yes. Aside from his injuries to his right arm, and I believe you described sort of laceration above his eye, mm -hmm. um, John O'Keefe did not have a single other injury on his body from the neck down, correct? I don't know if that's fair to say. Well, you didn't report a single injury to his shoulders, correct? Correct. You did not report a single injury to his chest, correct? Correct. You did not report a single injury to his torso, correct? Correct. You did not report a single injury to his back, correct? Correct. You also did not report a single injury to his ribs, correct? Correct. No injury to his hips, right? Uh, correct. You observed no injury to his knees, correct? I reported no injuries to his knees, correct? No injuries to his shins, correct? Correct. No injuries to his ankles, right? Correct. And no injuries to his feet? Correct. There were also some puncture wounds in that shirt. And also, oh. so, I'm sorry, puncture wounds in the shirt? P puncture holes okay. in, in the shirt. Um, and on what do you base the opinion that the injuries are consistent with dog bite or scratch marks? Well, the patterns. There are several patterns of parallel wounds that um, appear to be superficial sc scratches that could have been caused by nails or could have been caused by teeth. Um, that th they, um, there are different angles on the arm and different locations on the arm. And, uh, but they're generally oriented in a, in a Pacific 
direction. And there's also an area of the distal forearm, which is close to the wrist, uh, which shows what I believe is an arch area of, of teeth marks. And what's the significance of the arch area? Well, so the arch would be the front uh, area of the jaw of, of the animal, you know, or the, or the dog in this case, uh, where the teeth are, are tend to be close together and, and curved. The, 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 there's a curved pattern to the configuration of the teeth. Let me have just a moment, Your Honor. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's. <laughs> With permission, may I publish? Uh, yes. Exhibit two for one year. Yes. Is this a photograph of the uh, of John O'Keefe's arm? Yes. Is this one of the several photographs that you uh, reviewed in coming to your opinions and conclusions? Yes. I want to ask you a couple of questions about this. Uh, there should be a, a laser pointer on the, the desk. Mm. Okay. Can you explain for the jurors what it is about the injuries that assisted you in coming to your opinion and conclusion that this is from an animal attack? Okay, there's several patterns here. So, for instance, uh, let's look here right near the elbow, the exterior part of the elbow. There's these two linear marks, which uh, appear to be from upper teeth, and two punctures below those, which um, are superficial, meaning they didn't go very deep into the skin, but uh, they appear from the lower teeth. So that's one pattern. Uh, there are, there's another pattern close to the shoulder, which shows parallel uh, marks, these two, and maybe a third one in, in the middle, uh, pa parallel marks that are oriented at, at a certain angle. And uh, these are superficial wounds, uh, uh, which are um, consistent with teeth marks. Uh, they also could be possibly consistent with, with nail marks, but... With, with what? A nail from, uh, claws. from claw, claws, yes. Right. Uh, we have some more here, uh, similar with from, you know, obviously different teeth involved or uh, different claws. And, um, and then over down here, closer to the wrist, we have an unusual uh, pattern of uh, at least four striations, the way I see it, at least four striations, that uh, I believe are caused uh, from the teeth towards the front of the mouth, near the arch. I, in, uh, it appears that there's an arch pattern here. So... In a dog attack or in an animal attack, in your experience, uh, let me take this one down. Uh, just uh, let's cover the ground on the, the three exhibits that we've already marked. Can we take a look at exhibit one? Is this just a close? May I publish your? Yes, I apologize. Is this just a close-up of the same injuries? Yes. And do these appear to be consistent with what you just testified to in terms of either teeth or claw marks, especially as it, as it uh, relates to the area closest to the elbow? Yes. All right. And then looking at exhibit three. May I publish? Yes. Is this a close-up view of the area closer to the wrist that indicated those parallel, you used the word striations? Yes. All right. And these appear to be taken, uh, attended to the autopsy as opposed to the other photograph and two was taken in the hospital. Is that right? That is correct. All right. Uh, and would that, with the time difference, account for the slight change in the, the nature of the wound? Uh, it could. The photograph of the wound, I guess? It, it could, or a different technique, yes. Okay. Uh, let me take these down. Did you take into consideration the lack, in coming to your opinion and conclusion, the lack of other injuries, for instance, fractures, broken bones, or deep bruising, soft tissue injuries? Oh, yes. Injuries that you testified to today were that he had sort of a laceration above his eyelid, eyelid correct? The, the injuries that I testified to today, correct, yes. And the scratches on his right arm? On the right forearm, yes. No further questions. Okay, Mr. Lally. Uh, Dr. Rice, with reference to fractures of broken bones, um, can you explain sort of why that may not have been noted or, or why that wasn't included within the chart? Sure, yeah, I'd, I'd like to. Um, so with, with a patient like Mr. O'Keefe who came in, um, the focus of myself and, and the team of physician assistant, nurse practitioner, and nurses, whoever was helping in a case like this, the focus is in core resuscitative medicine um, of securing an airway, making sure he has a breathing tube in, making sure that, that the CPR is 
uh, being applied to the right pressure to the right place, making sure that the, the core resuscitative elements of medicine are happening and less, <coughs> as in the mind can only focus on so much. So I think in cases like this, uh, because the attention is on resuscitation of someone's heartbeat, their life, there's less focus on injuries or observations that don't coincide with the resuscitation effort or not or not pertinent to that resuscitative effort, if that answers your, is your yeah, excuse me, if that answers your question. So in that vein, it's not like you're doing x-rays or a full skeletal survey or something like that. Excuse me. How did that play into your opinion? Well, so, of course, I considered, you know, what else could have caused these wounds, you know, in, in, uh, before coming to my conclusion. And, um, and so I wanted to rule out other things. And there were no ma significant uh, major bodily um, injuries that, uh, outside the head. Uh, there was nothing, there were no, uh, no fractures of the uh, long bones, the chest, the pelvis, uh, um, you know, the arms. So, yeah, so, uh, so having seen hundreds and hundreds of car accident victims and um, people hit by cars. Uh, I ruled that out very quickly. Okay, and in terms of the injuries that you could see, especially as they're attended to the, to the arm, based on everything that we've discussed today, is it your opinion, based on a reasonable degree of scientific certainty, that those injuries are consistent with an animal attack as opposed to a vehicular, motor vehicular pedestrian incident? Yes.